century, in Germany, I designed rules where everything becomes mental, quick, silvery, super fast, and soon enough also Mars in a week or two there. So the next few weeks are going to see an acceleration of all of this discussion that we're having here. And I did not make up the date today, by the way. This was not elected by me. <laughs> it was Raymond Merriman who said, look, I have to be there on this date, and I'm here on that date. So here's your window. There you go. <laughs> so the Capricorn chose Capricorn Moon. We didn't choose it. It was just given to us. Now, how does this relate to the astrology with the imagination? Yes, I think to some degree Pisces is helpful. Neptune in Pisces now for another 10 years will certainly open up literally unimaginable vistas of what we could come up with. This alignment for the next 10 years has a downside that we could get misguided. I don't like to speak about downsides because these are just mental concepts and we can just as well take these away and say, okay, time to put it to the side. What is it good for? and a focus on what that's good for, knowing that sometimes it can be a bit sidetracked. But I say the imagination that's coming to this planet, to the human beings, to the animals, to everybody, from the stars, from the time travelers, from other civilizations, and via the energy of the planets in their respective constellations, that has impact on us in a positive way. And I'm actually saying, and this may sound really crazy, that we are also plants because we're made up of star material genetically. And so we can talk back to them in some way, you know? So it's a both way, two way street. Does that make sense? So that just told me stuff that was so out there. That's all I better go research this stuff. And the NASA guys, those were not famous known guys, those were scientists, they said to me, the Earth has a serious problem in terms of how it's going to make it three-dimensionally through these changes that are occurring. And they had said to me, there is a cyclical correlation to how this happens. In short, I'm coming to the radiant zones in a second now. Why radiant zones? And this is our biggest threat, this earth changes. It's because now and then, and I don't know the exact cycles, but now and then, the earth got wiped out by external changes, sometimes by space war, you know, the Sumerians and stuff, but sometimes simply by colliding comets, planets, whatever, or sometimes by other forces of a magnetic, electro or electric kind. You know, the universe is electric, so sometimes the Earth is under stress naturally. The Earth is itself like a being, and you know, it expands and contracts, and the continents move and stuff, and Land masses go down, land masses come up. You know, this stuff happens, has happened for tens of thousands of years. So we had now in the last 1,500 years, maybe 2,000 years, we had about a couple of thousand years of what I would call a good run. <laughs> right? But now, obviously, it looks like the next 100 to 200 years could get a little bit more challenging. I don't believe anything totally final bad will happen. I know this will not happen. But I know that, you know, we have issues and then we have on top of it consciousness issues. Those are man-made structures. We have problems with people who are not yet understanding what we're talking about. We have issues with politicians who don't get it. We have situations with economies that go up and down that they are maybe destroyed on purpose, but maybe to stupidity simply. And so this creates an outside situation where an intelligence officer says, your outside situation, sir, is that you have a regiment attacking here, something from here, over there, your bridge went down, behind you, they cut you off. And the guy says, yeah, and now? So you have to come up with A, B, C version and tell him which is best and why. So we said, best is self-sustained, self-sufficient, and outside of the system. It doesn't mean independent because the notion, the word of independent, I personally don't like because nothing is independent, but everything is interdependent. Like Putin says it all the time about economy and politics. He said, look, it's not about independent, it's about sovereign. He keeps saying the word sovereign nations. They do not belong to some structure or system that's been dictated by some central hierarchical command. And so what? Lavrov and Putin and the Chinese and India and South Africa and some of them are saying is 
how about we can just be our own self and figure it out and together with others who are of this opinion we'll create a network and we'll figure it out further and then we get to a point maybe in five years that could be fast in 2020 or 25 maybe to a point where we have an international federation but the space beings are saying to us that's fine that's like we made enough of Boy Scout to like <laughs> high school, figured out the International Federation. We're like, and we're saying, how about planetary federation? That is the opposite of one world government. I want everyone to understand there will not be a one world government. There's not, not going to be this one fall of one thing. But it's a planetary federation where everyone is encouraged, not only allowed to, but encouraged to you know be who they are. You know, the Chinese are the Chinese, they have a history of theirs. And some of the Africans are what they are, and they should have the right to be that, right? And the Europeans who are a mixture of many of these things should also figure it out on their own. And so eventually we graduate to something way more interesting, both economically, physically, uh, with new energies, technologies, and so on. And so during these times of changes, which we're in now, from 2000, say, to 2040, 2050, we can do very constructive things. Most people are simply scared of all this stuff. They say, I don't know what to do about it. This, this is like, I can't manage this. So it's our job to say to them, well, that's a challenge. Guess what? This is why we're born here. This is why you, you chose to be here now. And you have to do something about it. So we said, how about we do what we can to be on our own feet. And that's what we call radiant zones because we said the Earth itself is going through energy depletion zones in time and in space while the solar system cruises around. But also we're going through Earth changes and depleted energy zones due to cities that are too big, nuclear power stations and electronics that emanate. Just frequencies, it's all about frequencies and energy situations that are not helpful for our minds, for our hearts, for our electric circuitry internally. And so we have to work on many levels. We have to work on our health. That's why Radiant Zones. We have to become our own doctors, health teachers. We have to become our own <coughs> students and teachers. We have to become our own bankers. Right? We have to see to it that we're independent also while we're having these financial structures that we don't go down with the system. And just generally speaking, we need to do most everything we can invent and imagine to do to become what Jim Sinclair has said, get out of the system. Geo 